Hi everybody, say hi. Hi. <laughs> this is my hubby. Um, we're going to talk about insulin and insulin resistance and type 2 diabetics. But I've got to show you a shirt first. Can you guys read that? <laughs> He's gotten a lot of compliments on that shirt. Okay. Or so, comments at least. Comments. <laughs> so, uh, okay, the first thing, what is the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 diabetic? Okay, so first of all, really people have to understand what this whole diabetes thing is about. It's all got to do with carbohydrate metabolism. Uh, so a type 1 diabetic, if he eats carbs, they get absorbed into his bloodstream, they're available, but his body cannot actually absorb them because he does not have any insulin. So a type 1 diabetic is somebody with a defect in his pancreas who does not have insulin, so he's literally starving in the midst of plenty. He can have lots of sugar in his blood, but he's, there's no way for his body to take it up and to use it. Okay. A type 2 diabetic, on the other hand, can have lots of insulin in his blood, but his body is just not listening to the insulin anymore. It's, it's just, it has stopped responding. So the same thing is happening. They've got lots of potential nutrients and energy in their blood, but it's just not getting absorbed anymore. However, a type 1 diabetic typically gets born that way, or often it develops when they're very young. Type 2 diabetic, well, to some extent that's a self-inflicted condition. Okay. I can explain the long whole story where it, comes from, where it comes from, but we have to first look at what insulin is, why the body needs it, and all that stuff. So first of all, when you eat any carbohydrate, it gets absorbed, gets into the, comes into the bloodstream. Now, in a normal person, first place it gets stored is in the liver and secondly in the muscle. What's left over, once the liver is filled up and the muscles are filled up, the rest goes to the fat cells. Mm -hmm. Now carbs, carbs that are stored in your liver will be available for, for the rest of the body again when your blood sugar drops. The liver will respond by releasing it into the blood to keep your blood sugar levels constant. Carbs that are stored in your muscle will only be usable as energy. I mean, you have to use those muscles or else, I mean, it, it, it's not coming back out into the blood for other organs to use. Once it's in your muscles, it'll stay there and it'll get used there. Now, the same goes for fat cells. Carbs that get absorbed into the fat cells will get turned into fat. It'll get re-released later when you need that energy but as fat. So once it's in your fat cells, people, it ain't, it ain't coming out unless you're gonna be dieting or something. Uh, okay, so what's insulin resistance? Okay, so as I said, really, your liver and your muscle is where carbs are supposed to go. If you eat more carbohydrate and more calories than you need on a continuous basis. The liver will get full, it'll stay full. The muscles will get full and stay full because they have a limited storage capacity. So they're saturated. They're saturated. They've got as much carbs in them as they can handle. Mm -hmm. The rest will go to fat cells. Now believe it or not, even they can get full. Mm -hmm. But by that point it should be pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. And really, they stop. What what happens is there's lots of insulin. Your body's telling your um, muscle and your liver, your fat cells, "Hey, there's food. It's time to eat." But your liver is full, your muscles are full, and your fat cells are full. So simply, they're not listening to the insulin anymore. Your blood sugar stays up, and that's essentially at that point you've become a type 2 diabetic if you're no longer responding to insulin. Okay, so what happens? Why do doctors then give you give type 2 diabetics insulin? 
giving a type 2 diabetic insulin is a bit like shouting in somebody that's going deaf's ear. You have to shout louder and louder, but it's just going to make him more deaf. More deaf. Mm -hmm. So really, it's, 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 it's just making it worse. Uh, and to some extent, the insulin will be force-feeding your body. It will literally, to some extent, force your body to absorb those extra calories and uh, it will make you even fatter. Now, a lot of these medications that they give to type 2 diabetics actually makes it easier for your fat cells to multiply mm -hmm. so that there's more room for the stuff to go into. Now, talk about sabotaging somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, once those extra fat cells are there, they're not ever going away. Mm -hmm. Not unless you work yourself to death and diet yourself well, to death. Well, you can empty them out, but they're never going to really disappear. Die off. They're not going to die, not, not easily. Okay, but it is possible to starve. If you starve them enough, you can get lean enough and stay there. Under some very extreme funny circumstances, it's possible to actually get rid of fat cells, but uh, not under anything that any one of us is likely to ever experience. Okay, so um, <coughs> so when the type 2 di what was the other question I wanted to ask? Um, okay, so if you give a type 2 diabetic insulin, uh, what happens to, okay, so like this friend of ours, she has been, um, ever since she's been on insulin, she's been gaining uh, 10 to 15 pounds each year um, with insulin when she hasn't been, she hasn't changed any of her um, dieting habits or working out habits. Why is that happening? Insulin is the most anabolic hormone in the body. Anabolic simply means to build up, to make bigger. Unfortunately, what's get, getting bigger in this case is your, your fat okay. cells, your fat tissue. You're just getting fatter. Okay. Um, so, is type 2 diabetics, um, or is type 2 diabetes, can you heal type 2 diabetes? Can it actually... As long as the person still has a working pancreas, Mm -hmm. They can, by changing their diets and activity levels, mm -hmm. they can lead a normal lifestyle. Without insulin? Without insulin. Okay. So if a type 2 diabetic finally gets off of insulin and they actually lean out and they start training and they get into a healthy life and say they have a normal 15 or 18 percent body fat uh, levels, can they, are they going to be like any other normal person that would be occasionally be able to have a chocolate and... and live like that or is it going to be like if I have one bite of chocolate then I have to go back on insulin? Nope, they'll be like any normal person. Okay, so it's the type 2 diabetes is reversible? Like I said, depending on how badly you've damaged your pancreas because in this whole process your pancreas is trying to make more insulin and more insulin to get your blood sugar down and eventually it'll burn out. Okay, so if you've been on insulin but you're um, pancreas is still functioning. You will be able to get off of the function, uh, off of the in insulin, and uh, lead a normal life. Yes. Okay. Depending so, on what your definition of normal is. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. Well, yeah, we're not talking about getting back into eating stuff that's going to make us big again. We're talking about yes, eating a healthy, we have being a having a li healthy lifestyle. Now, what um, what was I going to ask? You got me sidetracked. <laughs> My job. <laughs> okay, um, so if um, what was the other question um, about insulin? So what happens um, to type two uh, people with type two diabetes if they their um, pancreas actually shuts down? Then they become type one diabetics. Then they are insulin dependent. I mean, they're going to depend on insulin injections or something like that. For the rest of their lives. The rest of their lives. Okay, and then what is uh, what are the things that happens to uh, what is the long term ramifications of being um, insulin dependent? Well, maybe I should first say what's the uh, ramifications of not keeping your blood sugar levels in check. Mm -hmm. If you have high blood sugar levels, the sugar combines chemically with the proteins in your body, and Damage that it damages them, and it's very common for diabetics to 
lose feeling in their hands and feet, etc., mm -hmm. or to become blind or deaf. Okay, I guess that's it. So, well, that's it for now. We'll continue with the next one. Sure. Thank you, honey. Bye. <laughs> Bye.